So amid the growing threat from China, American CEOs flocking to Beijing to mingle once again with Xi Jinping and the CCP. What is wrong with that picture? Joining us now is Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State under Donald Trump and Fox News contributor. Secretary, great to have you here. Well, there was business going on, a lot of effective business between the United States and China under the Trump administration, particularly when China was buying all the products from our, our farmers in the Midwest. Uh, but this is this is a little different. China's doing much worse than it than it was. It's it's in an economic downspin right now. And I'm just wondering what you think of the the CEOs going over there. It, it looks like they're trying to bail China out. Well, look, thanks for having me on uh, for for the last 50 years. American policy had been to encourage these same business people to go over to China and do business. Uh, but sadly, Xi Jinping has changed the nature of the Chinese regime. And so. I tell these leaders, uh, middle managers, CEOs, everyone who works for these companies that are doing business in China, you're next. And when Xi Jinping tells you that this is a win-win transaction, you should know he's stolen more intellectual property than any human being has ever done in the history of civilization by dollar value. Uh, he has destroyed more American businesses by undermining them, outcompeting them, by stealing their stuff and destroyed American jobs. And so be wary. Understand that if you're on good terms with Chinese leadership today, the day they no longer need you will be the day that they will come after yeah. your intellectual property and your employees as well. And it sounds a little like New York City, but I, that's a whole nother story. We'll get into that maybe <laughs> some other time. But a lot of a lot of businesses are wondering whether this is a place to do business. But they they keep coming. And I'm just wondering what the lure is. If, in fact, China's economy is going down, they're buying less. Uh, they're producing less. They're not able to say they, they, in fact, have the opposite of our inflation problem. They have deflation there, uh, so they're not able to sell as much as they used to. What is, is, it, is there still enough of a middle class in China so that it's, it's within their, their business to, to do business with China? Yeah, I think it's a couple different things. Uh, some of them manufacture in China and make in China, so they've got big capital investments there. And frankly, you know, that, that seems fine to me. Um, some of them are there because they're looking for new markets. Um, I would suggest to them there are many other new markets that can provide more value to the company with a, a lot less risk. And you see that, too. You see uh, sourcing coming out of Vietnam and other parts of Asia, people, companies moving out of China. Uh, some of these folks would tell you they were there just to uh, placate the Chinese government for the day that they can actually get out. So they were there yeah. just kind of as an exercise and smiling while they transitioned their company out of China. I think that's probably a, a wise thing for them as fiduciaries. Uh, but some of them, I think, uh, are engaged in business there that actually has national security implications. And it's those leaders that need to uh, hightail it. Right. Uh, we, we can no longer engage with it. We can no longer engage with the Chinese Communist Party on dual use technologies or things that really matter for the American supply chain and American national security. And those for those companies, we need to help them by making it unlawful for them to do business mm -hmm. there. And, and frankly, the Biden administration has done some of that in the same way we did in the Trump administration. Uh, but for, you know, beach balls and blankets and that kind of thing, uh, that is a totally different right. commodity. Right. And we have to we have to really make sure that we get the first part right, the things we really need to yeah. control here in the United States and get those out of our adversaries nation. I want to talk about Israel, but just one more quick one on, on China. It's got to be a quick answer. But you see all these Chinese coming across the border, a huge increase in the numbers from hundreds every year to tens of thousands. How much of that do you think is calculated by the CCP? <laughs> Nobody leaves China without Xi Jinping knowing it. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they have so perfect what is their information plan? and what do you, perfect what do you control. think Xi wants his people to do here if they're the ones who are orchestrating this? Uh, I'd say there's probably several things. One is probably someone just wants to get rid of. These are bad actors, thugs, cr criminals. Uh, some of them are going to move fentanyl. They'll be part of the cartel efforts to move both money and drugs into our country. And then some handful of them, I am quite confident he is using for either espionage or propaganda inside of our country. And I fear worse. Some of them will work alongside terrorists. And Sunday we'll have a really bad day inside the United States because of we've because we've allowed these folks to come across in ways that we don't even fully appreciate yet. OK, let's switch to Israel if we can. Uh, and you, you hear comments coming out of this administration. We just heard from uh, Vice President Harris getting very close to, to claiming that Israel's committing genocide in, in Gaza. How much, how much closer is the Biden administration actually cutting our ties with Israel? 
First thing I think that matters the most is everyone who's watching needs to know that this is just fundamentally untrue. Israel has conducted their defense of their nation in a way that is deeply consistent with how good militaries, how Western militaries fight. Um, and so I, well, while I'm sure there's a handful of bad actors, n know this, we should all know, the Israelis have done an enormous amount of work to protect civilians there. It is Hamas and Iran who have put the civilians in harm's way. So her predicate for this whole problem set is just fundamentally false, and she should be ashamed of herself because she reads the intel and she knows better. Yeah. Second, the damage that's being done to this relationship is enormous. Uh, and that matters not only to Israel, it matters to the American people as well. Uh, an unsecured Jerusalem, an unsafe Israel, an unstable Middle East presents a lot of risk to the United States. And that will come back to harm us in ways that uh, I think this administration doesn't understand that if you don't protect American interests by having good partners and friends and defend them when they're in their time of need, as Israel is today, that's going to come back to haunt yeah. the United States. They're, they're pushing me to a break, but I, I have to ask a question about the deep state and its, it's, it's how, how deeply it is embedded into the State Department. I know you tried to move some of that out. <laughs> uh, clearly, you weren't able to do it. We just had this, uh, this, this one, I guess she was a foreign affairs officer who quit uh, the State Department, and, and uh, she wrote an, an article for CNN talking about how she was essentially on the side of, of what amounts to Hamas, and she wrote a piece saying why I'm resigning. She said, so many of my colleagues feel betrayed. I write for myself, but speak for many others. How deeply embedded in the State Department is this deep state contingent, and is it possible to get them out? I'll answer as quickly as I can. First, imagine this. She is more pro-Hamas than the Biden administration. That's quite a remarkable statement. Uh, second, uh, it is deeply embedded. There are a group of uh, establishment foreign policy people there that just simply do their own thing and don't do what presidents and secretaries of state ask them to do. Um, I struggled with that. I confronted it. It was a, a difficult challenge. We made a dent, but uh, there was an awful lot of work to do. But someone who had six years or eight years and was determined to get it right, to bring in the right kinds of people that would do America's work, uh, it can absolutely be fixed. I'm confident of that. But it's going to take real leadership, an enormous amount of political capital, and a, a, a spine of steel. Secretary Pompeo, thank you very much for being here. Good to see you. Have a wonderful Easter. Appreciate thank you, you coming. Thank you. It's great to see you.